Hi guys, uh, this is just a quick video to show you a little project that I'm working on. Um, and what it is, it's a pulse LED pulse detector and what I want to do is just measure the power that my house is using. Uh, I've got one of the new smart meters that's got a, an LED on it that pulses an output depending on how much power you use. The more power you use, the faster the pulse. Um, and the idea is if we can measure those pulses, measure the time between those pulses, we can then calculate actual energy. Um, I do have one of those uh, CT metering type devices that just wirelessly transmits the power into the house. Um, they're really inaccurate when you've got any type of inductive load connected such as air conditioners and things because um, it doesn't allow for power factors so um, I just find them a little bit frustrating and I want something a little bit more accurate. Um, it's just a project that I'm hacking together. I'm not an expert by any means so I'm do electrical work or on the electrical trade um, but uh, that doesn't really extend to much in the way of electronics so I'm just a hobbyist just watching uh, Dave Jones and Chris Gamble and, and all those other guys and um, I'll sort of pick things up as I go so anyway I'll show you what's it all about. Uh, the basic concept is just to use a light dependent resistor um, just in a voltage divider circuit that will detect the pulses from the LED on the meter um, and I just feed that into a little op amp to amplify the signal and then if we can time the, di the if we can time between the pulses we should be able to then calculate how what our power usage is. When I decided to have a go at this circuit it was the weekend and I didn't actually have a light dependent resistor here um, so I just went to home to the local supermarket and bought one of the the cheapo ten dollar um, night lights. And I pulled it apart and I just got a light dependent resistor out of that. Most expensive light dependent resistor you can probably buy, I guess. Um, and I've built up this circuit. Okay, so the way it works is we've got um, just a voltage divider between the light dependent resistor and another resistor that's basically similar value to the mid range of the light dependent resistor. Five volts on this side, zero volts on this side. Um, whenever the LED flashes, it um, basically creates that resistance there to change, which will then put a bit of a, um, a spike in the voltage, actually increase the voltage, which then will come down to this op amp. Now I've just got a capacitor in there to get rid of the DC bias, which I'll show you shortly on the oscilloscope. Um, and then we have to have something to compare it to what we've got is again just another voltage divider um, that has got about half a volt so it's putting in basically half a volt into the inverted terminal um, and then whenever the um, non-inverted terminal goes above that half a volt reference it'll slam the output high um, which will basically output four volts and it'll give you a nice a nice square wave okay here's the circuit put together um, sorry it's a real mess it's bit hard to see what's going on. Um, basically this side here is just driving this LED which is hooked up to my function generator. Um, my function generator is not very healthy um, so that's why I've actually had to put it through a little transistor so I had enough current to drive the, the flashing LED. Um, the LED is currently flashing about oh, 8 times a second and you can see the little light dependent resistor just, just on the other side of that. Um, and then that goes into this other part of the circuit. I've got my decoupling cap here and um, hiding in behind here is just an LM358 op amp. Um, bit of a mess but um, it's just hacked together to see if the actual thing's going to work and it seems to be working. Let's have a look at that. Here we can look at it on my scope. Um, the super duper high quality O1 Chinese scope I got for Christmas a couple of years ago. Uh, probably not the best one around but that works for what I, what I do. Um, here we go, we've got two channels up on the screen at the moment. The red channel that you see is actually coming from the um, the output of the decoupling cap. So that's the signal that's been detected and, um, and fed into one side of the op amp. The yellow trace is actually the output of the op amp, so it just gives a nice clean 5 volt signal, 4 volt signal at the moment. Uh, which I'm probably going to feed into an Arduino or something similar to do the timing. Okay, now what we might do is you can see that um, the 
output from our light dependent resistor voltage divider circuit um, on the scope here at the moment you can see that it's just above zero volts for the low and at the high it's about half a volt because we've got 500 millivolts per division um, that's actually on the output side of the decoupling cap that's getting fed into the op amp I'll turn the op amp output off just so just tidies it up a little bit um, if I move our probe onto the input of the decoupling cap Move our trigger, uh, oh, wrong trigger. One. There we go, we can get it to trigger. Um, that same signal is now putting out one, two volts on the low and about 2.5 volts um, when, it's, when it's at its high point. Um, and obviously, when we're going into the the op amp, it's, it's nice just to um, have a reference back to zero, so we use the decoupling cap for that. Now we'll just check that it does work over a range of frequencies. Um, we're currently at 10 hertz at the moment. If I increase the frequency, um, we're up to 40 hertz. It still seems to be working okay. 50 hertz, still working. 70 hertz, yep, yeah, still going. And um, yeah, that's fine for what we're doing. All right, we might take it out to the meter box and we'll give it a real world test. Okay guys, um, it wasn't real convenient to take the video camera out to the meter box, but I just took a couple of photos with my iPhone, which um, I'm showing here. Uh, the first one's just a, a picture of the meter. I was drawing uh, 9.144 kilowatts. Had to turn lots of stuff on. I turned the ducted air con, got a split system air con. Turned all the lights on and I managed to get a, a pretty high high reading just so I could get a, a pulse fast enough to get a, an easy grab on the oscilloscope. Um, so as you can see it's drawing 9.144 and you can just see where I put the sensor, sticky tape the sensor over the LED that, that outputs a pulse. Um, and then the next one's a screenshot of the oscilloscope. Um, you can see the nice clean pulses that I was getting off it. And I just use the cursors to um, to measure the time between the two pul two of the pulses, and it was 0 0.492 seconds or 492 milliseconds. Now let's do a little bit of the math just to calculate how close our reading on the oscilloscope is to the the meter reading. Um, this meter outputs 800 pulses per kilowatt hour or per unit of energy. The time we measured on the oscilloscope was 492 milliseconds and as I say our meter reading was 9.144 kilowatts. Um, here we've got one hour which is equal to 3600 seconds and our pulse as we said was 0 0.492 of a second so if we divide that into our 3600 that means that if we were to maintain that usage for the full hour we would have 7,317 7, pulses. We have to divide this by our 800 pulses that our, our meter defaults to. Um, 7317 divided by 800 gives you 9.146 kilowatts. Um, and the meter reading was 9.144. So that wasn't actually a bad result. Um, considering the oscilloscope's only reading down to one millisecond, uh, if we use an Arduino or something like that, we can probably get a little bit better accuracy, but anyway, that's close enough, I think. It all seems like it's going to work okay. Uh, in the next video, I think I'll get an Arduino set up and we'll input the pulses into that and time them and uh, just do calculation on the fly so we can see our, our kilowatt reading in the uh, serial output of the, of the Arduino. Uh, ultimately, we probably want to hook it up to a a PIC32 or, or something a bit smarter that can um, run a web server or upload it to the internet or, or um, yeah, do something that just makes it a little bit more accessible. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Alright, thanks for watching.